It was funny today, my coworker, I told him we were doing fairies and he was trying to say Tinkerbell. <laughs> and he said, it was like Tinkleberry. <laughs> Ew. It was funny to me. It was funny. Tinkleberry. Warning. The topics discussed on this podcast are subject to adult themes and languages. We seek to unravel the unexplained and unknown. This is Encounters. Hi everyone and welcome to Encounters. My name's Dakota. I'm Amanda. And today we are entering the world of the Fae. Coming at you with all the Gaelic traditions. Well actually, like greater (laughs) European traditions. Oh, so many. I mean, depending on how far you go back. Sidebar. Yeah. I was telling my coworker that we were going to do fairies, and he got really excited. He was like, oh, you're going to do something, like, light and fun. I was like, no. <laughs> They're not what you think. <laughs> yeah, you start off thinking that these fairies are going to be like, oh, yay, it's, like, nice Tinkerbell, and then, like... You find out it's a dark, dark world. They're ready to steal your children. Or, like, kill you, just straight up. Like They're climbing oh, in so your cute. windows. Trying to snatch it up your babies. So fairies didn't start in just one place. They're a lot like werewolves. They're all over Europe. We get a lot of our folklore from the Celtic, but the German, the English, Slavic, and the French, they all have different stories about these creatures. And fairies aren't just one type of thing. They're pretty much the name that are given for any mythological creature that appears kind of human, is small in stature, has magical powers, and is to be tricky. So things like goblins and gnomes are considered fairies, but also there are specific creatures, and those are more of the winged creatures that come around later that are fairies. Yeah, I mean, the modern idea of fairy really comes from our literary giants like Chaucer and Shakespeare, the story of King Arthur, and all of these other stereotypical kind of literary giants bring Mm -hmm. forth the idea of the little bitty fairy girl that is mischievous or has magic and wants to cause trouble or has these random chords. But... The folklore of the fairy and the little people far predates these. Yeah, because back then, they didn't know really what was going on. So they kind of made up a lot of things to explain things they couldn't explain. People were so scared of offending fairies that they didn't even like to say the word fairies or fae or, you know, whatever. Right. They did anything and everything to avoid fairies because they were really scared they were going to put an evil curse on them or cast a spell on them or do something to harm them in some kind of way and a lot of times ending in death yeah no and i mean if you'll refer back to our halloween episode Samhain and all souls day specifically set aside in this welsh and gaelic culture to put out offerings for the little folk or the fey people And Mm -hmm. oftentimes having consequences if you ignored such cases. Yes. People generally blamed fairies for sickness, for misfortune, for... Bad luck. Yes, bad luck, anything like that. And the actual word fairy derives from the Latin word. You guys, I can't with these words. But I think it's feta, (laughs) F-A-T-A, which means fate. And then it's an old French word of fairy meaning enchantment. So they really believed that fairies and the fae would set things into motion that they could not reverse. So they did a lot, a lot, a lot to avoid upsetting fairies, disturbing fairies. They would avoid digging in like fairy hills. They would avoid particular paths, a particular forest, certain things you would see out in nature that people would avoid so they wouldn't upset the fairies. Yeah, and I think it's important now to understand why people were so afraid of these things. What what are the Fae? Where did they come from? Well, are we talking about Christians? Well, yeah, I mean, let's just... Are we going to start with that? I mean, Uh, there's... There's there's, there's different... Yeah, this is the thing. There's the blend of Christian and Gaelic, 
which is where they believe the fae come from. But then there's also the predate history that basically states that fairies are the elementals, they're the spirits of the woods, the forest, the mm-hmm. nature around us. Yes. Also, people believe that fairies were ghosts and spirits from, like, the past. Yes. So it's kind of either way you look at it, people assumed these things were, like, spirits from the earth. They were here before we were here. Very much like the jinn yes. of the Arabian culture. Exactly. What if fairy and jinn are the same fucking things? I mean, they, I I mean, they act the fucking same. Well, as we go into later, and they also have like a different realm they live in, but we're side by side with them. If you go back to Christian uh, origins, there's one conspiracy that states that Eve had these special children that she was trying to keep out of sight of God because she felt like they were filthy or unworthy of being seen. And when God found out about them, he was like, well, bitch, you'll never see them again. And made them invisible to her and thus the rest of mankind. That is where the fae come from. They're the unseen children of Eve. And another kind of story that also ties into Christianity are that these fairies are actually fallen angels. What's the story, Dakota? God was hanging out in heaven one day and decided that the gates of heaven shouldn't just remain open and that they needed to just let in the chosen few. So upon making this decision, he slammed the door shut and anyone that was too good for hell was trapped on earth And those in hell became demons, those in heaven became angels, and those trapped between too good for hell, but not fast enough to get into heaven, became the fairies. (laughs) Yeah, that's where they're all magical and shit. Which is where we get the idea of giving them sacrifices or giving them treats uh, to pay homage, because they're not technically our ancestors, but we gotta appease them because they are still godlike folk. Godlike folk. We are going to break down some of the different types of fairies for you now. It's very important to understand that the fae realm is multiversal. Like, there's there's so many different things. And so Amanda and I are going to pick out some of our favorite few to let you know about and give you some of the backstory and context to them. Okay, so the important thing to remember is in Gaelic history, as these angels were falling to earth, Some fell in the forest, some fell in the towns, some fell in the water. And when they fell to these places, they became one. That's why we've got wood fairies, sea fairies, household fairies, mountain fairies, and a race, a sub race called the elves, which is like a more advanced kind of fae. Mm -hmm. Now, some of the fairies we're going to break down for you in today's subsection are going to be the banshee the brownie the changeling the puka the hobgoblin the leprechaun and the washer at the ford plus any other random assortment of things we just think you need to know about think of this as fantastic beasts and where to find them except fantastic fey and don't go looking right they will fuck you up So, let's start with one of my favorite things, the Banshee. This is one of the more, I kind of feel like, dangerous of the fairy Well, it's more of an omen kind of situation than it is, like, an actual, like, thing. Yeah, so if you hear those cries, like, death is coming for you. And Banshee actually, like, when broken down into etymology, means fairy woman or the woman of the fairy mound. I feel personally the Banshee is one of the more known fairies that people, I don't think people think are fairies because I've seen them in Supernatural, Charmed, pretty any, pretty much any paranormal show, they're going to throw the Banshee in there and you never really think of them being fairies. You more think of them being more like demonic, scary creatures. Yeah, it's because most people believe that the Banshee is a wraith or a spirit, which it is, but it is still technically under the fairy t- like umbrella. But unlike a lot of misconceptions, a banshee does not cause death. She actually foretells death. Mm-hmm. And yeah. 
it's often believed that a banshee is a spirit that's assigned to a family lineage. So you, if you hear a banshee, you're not hearing any other banshee but the one that's prescribed to your family tree. Yeah, and you're going to die. And yeah, be like, you're not going to die, but somebody you know is going to die. <laughs> you may be the one that's going to die. <laughs> Somebody's going to die. In many cases, the Irish poet Yeats states that a dulhan or a headless fairy coachman accompanies banshees wherever they go. It was actually reported in 1807 that one of these headless coach fairies and a banshee appeared in Hyde Park and frightened two sentry guards to death. Oh, shit. There you go. A banshee is described as being a woman, usually young and fair, with kind of like a funeral shroud on, has long unbound hair, and is dressed in white, sometimes black, and is seen with a gray cloak over a green dress at times. And apparently she's got red eyes. Hmm. So yeah, that's the banshee. Tell us about brownies. Do these remind me a lot of Dobby from Harry Potter, which I think is so cute. <laughs> All I really knew about know about them is that they help clean your house. They're household elves. They do chores yeah. for you. They do nice things for you as long as you give them credit and give them treats. But if you start giving them clothing, they get up and leave because they think they're too good to clean your house. And if you don't reward them at all, they'll break all the shit in your house and make your milk go bad. Right, there you go. They're even known to chase away animals from your property. There's the goblin, the hobgoblin. Hob, the hobgoblin. Hob being the etymology for home, so meaning goblin of the home. These are found all over in Celtic folklore and Slavic folklore. And they're just bad luck things. Like when bad things happen to you, it's not, it's not because you're a bad person. It's because goblins are fucking with you. Basically, that's right. what this is. They're just little creatures with random different appearances no two goblins look the same and they just fuck with shit hmm. there's actually a reported case of an airplane that was flying over the atlantic and it almost made a crash landing because the engines were being fucked with by goblins on the wings then there's the leprechaun which are another tricky little fucks no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, they are. They are though. tricky. <laughs> it's an often misrepresented fairy. When most people think of the leprechaun, they think of the Lucky Charms person. Yeah. But they are basically the practical jokesters of the fairy world. And it is known that if you capture one, you get its pot of gold. But you're never supposed to touch fairy gold or leprechaun gold because it's like fool's gold and mm -hmm. it. It's just got a curse of bad luck on it. Apparently, they're really tiny men. And in their past lives, they were shoemakers. So a lot of them, like, hobble shoes. And there's an old fairy tale lore that proves that they're tricksters. One day, this young boy was playing in a lock. And he stumbled across a leprechaun. And he caught it. And he was like, I've got to go tell people. I've got to find people. And the leprechaun was like, I can't go with you. I can't go with you. I've got to go back home. And he was like, okay, well, I want your pot of gold. And the leprechaun was like, okay, well, it's over here. And he was like, well, I've got to go get the stuff to go dig it up. And he was like, well, how about this? You let me go. And I will leave a red ribbon tied around the tree that my pot of gold is buried under. And the kid was like, okay, that sounds like good to me. Not knowing that these things are tricksters or not believing or he runs off, comes back with some friends and some digging equipment. And the leprechaun had tied a red ribbon around every tree in the lock. As if to say, you'd have to dig up this whole forest to find my pot of gold. Right. Oh, these are like tricky little things, man. And I have hated the leprechaun ever since the movie Leprechaun. Yes. <laughs> that movie fucked me up. <laughs> That's so funny. So the change link is kind of a interesting little story. Well, thing. So these are pretty much fairies will come and take your baby back to the fairy wor world realm. And it will leave you a fairy baby instead. 
And these are kind of what people would say when they have kind of unwanted children. Normally, if they had kind of like... Or unruly children, right? Yes. You wouldn't notice that the child was different until later. Then the child will change. And that that's when you realize that you have, the you know, a fairy baby. And so this was kind of a way for them to explain kids who had, you know, birth defects and stuff like that. But the unfortunate thing is the way for you to get your baby back or for the fairies to return your baby and take their change link back is for you to kind of like torture or mistreat the child. And then the fairy would, you know, take their baby back and give you yours. And often they said that the fairies would take your children to either enslave them or just because they found your child to be beautiful a lot of kids who had blonde hair and blue eyes who were taken were supposedly taken for their beauty. It's creative the ways they would keep the fairies away from their children. They thought that the, the fairies would give you the changeling because they needed either human milk to survive or they just wanted, fairies just wanted them, their babies to be raised human or it was an elderly fairy that was kind of living out its last days and would be taken care of by the human parents. Yeah, it was basically like a fairy retirement home. Right? Which I thought is crazy. I did too. <laughs> when I read that, I, I was actually waiting to see if you were going to say that because what an ingenious thing. Right. Oh, here, we'll just take your baby as a slave and um, wipe grandma's ass. Thank you. Right? And when, when the fairies took your baby... Generally, they were not going to give it back. Like, the baby would stay in fairy land. It was intended to be a slave. Yes. Or an entertainment uh, piece. Or just, like, a model. Right? To breed with. Yeah. And the way... Here are a few ways they would keep the fairies away. Which, it was leaving open iron scissors by where the, kid, where the child slept. Mm-hmm. Or putting an inverted coat on the child when it went out into the woods so it wouldn't be taken or they would put ash on the baby because fairies did not like unclean babies they didn't want a dirty baby and they said they took unbaptized kids so that was another reason for you to get your child baptized yeah get in the church get into the church it'll save you right they were still putting ash on babies for a long time i don't know when they stopped but it was still modern times i'm sure some people still put ash on their babies to keep them from keep the fairies from them but there's this story about this little girl named elizabeth she lives in edinburgh and here's her her story is very crazy so elizabeth was born to Agatha, who was a single mother raising this baby in a four-bedroom apartment. Agatha had her apartment filled with hundreds of fairy statues just everywhere, all over the place. And she would actually keep Elizabeth in a small corner of a room to make room for her fairy statues. And every night, Agatha would cry to her to the fairies to please come and take Elizabeth away. Anytime Elizabeth would make a noise, cry, anything, Agatha was begging and pleading to these fairies to come and take her. And once that didn't work, she started starving poor Elizabeth, thinking that if she mistreated her enough that the fairies would come, but still nothing. So she began to beat Elizabeth, and still the fairies would not come. And Elizabeth somehow survived three years like this, from a baby to three years old, when Agatha started becoming so crazy, she boarded up all the windows so Elizabeth couldn't get any sunlight and started treating her like a dog, like an animal. Finally, one day, the police get a call saying that there was screaming coming from Agatha's apartment. After having a standoff with her where she would not open the door, they burst into her apartment and found Elizabeth tied to a table with Agatha holding a fairy statue about to beat the child to death with all her other fairies and all these other fairy statues in a really creepy circle around the table just all around her and as the police were taking her away 
Agatha was screaming at them that they that she had to she had to get rid of Elizabeth. Elizabeth was a monster and she had to get rid of her to set things right. Well, Elizabeth it turned out that Agatha had lost a child before and she thought that the fairies had come and taken Elizabeth and switched her out with the changeling and that she needed to destroy this thing. But Elizabeth went to a good home and Agatha is now in a mental institution living out the rest of her life. Oh my God. <laughs> yes, she tried to kill her baby because she thought the fairies had taken her. And this didn't happen too long ago. I don't have an exact date, but... It was a, it was a recent case. Well, and a lot of these modern day changeling stories come to us because of ancient stories like this one. There was a woman who had had two twins. And on All Souls Day, she forgot to leave the door open or any fairy rations out. The fairies were very angered by this, and when she turned her back, they stole her twins away, replacing them with two changeling babies. Now, she lived with these changeling babies for a while and started to notice something was different. The children were a bit more raucous. They wanted more food. They screamed and moaned and complained a lot more for babies. And there was a knock one day when a mysterious stranger appeared at the door. Fearing that the fairies had sent some more revenge she invited the stranger in fed him and when she went to the kitchen to take care of some of the plates the baby sprung into action destroying the room around them and the stranger sat with his mouth agape when she came back the babies jumped back in the cradle and the man was like yo you've got a problem these children are acting crazy and so they went to the priest, and the priest was like, yeah, I definitely think you've got some changelings. And so they began the changeling ritual, which was that they were going to do some chants and then smother the changeling children with an iron hot lid. They put the lid in the fire, heated it till it was iron hot, and as the stranger crept to the first baby in the crib, it sprung to life and both babies changed into their fairy forms and sprung out through the chimney. 24 hours later, the two twins returned to their crib and the mother lived happily ever after. The end. There's also another type of fairy that I found very intriguing called the Washer at the Ford or the Washerwoman. Now this is a very Celtic specific fairy that is seen almost like the Banshee. It's a harbinger of death. You know, it's an omen. Mm -hmm. And it's described as a woman that you will see dressed in green You'll recognize her by her webbed feet. She's also supposed to look like a crone and be bare-breasted. It's better for you to see her before she sees you. Because if you see her, you know that you've got an omen. If she sees you, you may be the omen. Also said that if you sneak up on her before she sees you and suck milk from her breast, you will become a foster child of the woman of wash and you will not die and you will be protected in battle all right there you go anyway yeah you have something else to say about that <laughs> that and that's really all the different types of fairies that are like big and important i think mm -hmm. yeah and like we said earlier a lot of fairies come out of nature there's tree fairies water fairies they I think they even consider mermaids fairies and seals Tell us about the seal people. The seal people? Well, mer are, are you talking about the mermaid story? Yes. The people born of the seal woman. <laughs> so we kind of get this. The beginning of the story is a little different for, for from what I heard. Because how I heard it was this beautiful woman each night would take off her tail. And Dakota heard it was a seal tail. It's like a seal skin. Yeah. She would take it off and she would sit on the rocks each night and kind of look out to the ocean. Or it was with a, a, a lot of her people were with her and they would go out and, you know, be on the beach and they would take off their seal skin. 
So one night, this man took the skin and hid it from the mermaid. So she was stuck with her legs. He was like, hey, what's up? Uh, I see you have legs now. We should, like, do this. So they ended up getting married. I don't think he said it like that, but (laughs) they ended up getting married. They ended up having uh, two kids. And one night, as the kids were playing in in the barn, they found the seal skin. So the mother was able to get her her tail back. And so that night she ran back off to the ocean. It was never to be seen again by the husband. But supposedly she would come back at night and see her kids. And her kids ended up having kids. And like a whole generation of people supposedly come from this mermaid or the seal woman. <laughs> There's also another type of fairy called the puka, which we can kind of see in multiple different religions around the world, specifically in the Himalayan reach. But the puka is a shapeshifter demon. Well, not demon. A shapeshifter fairy (laughs) that is known to cause lots and lots of trouble. It's invisible. It can take the shape of anything it wants. And it only reveals itself to certain people. Yeah. But where do these things reside? That's the question. Yes. In multiple different sources, you can see that there is a fey realm. It's a world that lives side by side. It's almost one of those parallel universes that we so often yeah. talk about. Right? There's, you know, the fey are hanging out with the shadow people in this parallel universe that we can't see. But it's right next to us. <laughs> these interdimensional planes, if you will. Yes. And there are representations of their planes here on Earth. We see fairy mounds and fairy trees. And these are usually just clusters of trees that either stick out of nowhere that have this ancient kind of feeling to them. This is where the idea of the elemental sneaks into play. But Mm -hmm. there's also ideas that if you see a lone white bush, that is a fairy bush. If you see a lone white tree that... You can't explain why it's there. That is a fairy tree. And these fairies almost treat these trees as fortresses or portals to their own realm. In fact, in many Irish folklore, you do not go near a fairy mound because it is the portal to the fairy realm. And once you're there, you cannot leave. You're you're stuck there. Well, you're lost Um, there. You can leave, but good luck finding your way out. (laughs) Good luck. (laughs) Yes. There's also uh, fairy rings which are kind of like the fairy trees, but it could be like mushrooms or trees or just anything that is just randomly in the, in a circle kind of out in the forest. And those are fairy rings. And uh, supposedly if you get stuck in one of those, it takes you back or forth into the future 200 years ahead or 200 years behind. Did you know only Clamvorians can see into the fairy realm? No, but that does not surprise me. Yeah. But there are ways you can see into it, too, you know. How? Okay, so supposedly you make a ointment out of a four-leaf clover. Or you look through a hole in a rock. And you can see into the fairy realm. But the problem is, if you look too long, you can either go mad or you can go blind. Maybe because you're rubbing clover on your eyes? I don't think you put the ointment on... I don't know if you put the ointment on your eyes. (laughs) I don't really know where you put the ointment. (laughs) But people back in time, back in the day, used to build their cottages without corners because they feared that they would be in the middle of a fairy path or they would build their cottages where their front door and back door were perfectly aligned. And if they felt, if they felt like they needed to, they would, open the doors at night so the fairies could pass through. Imagine living in a day and age where you could just leave your front door and back door open. I don't think that any day and age, because I'm like thinking about the werewolves coming in. Right? (laughs) Maybe that's why you got all these fucking monsters. You're just letting people in your house. Right? But these things, like people were real, real particular to not offend these fairies. Not to go to these places. Still to these days. To this day, people won't go to fairy circles and fairy rings and touch fairy mounds or dig farmers still won't plant if they they think it's like connected to fairies it's one of the things that people don't like to admit to but don't want to offend 
right? Just in case, like, that's the real one. Yeah, I mean, like, um, in fact, Ireland had political protests even up until the 80s about blocking a highway because a fairy tree was going to have to be cut down. And instead, they just built the highway around the tree. (laughs) Though, granted, the little man hiding in the tree saying, there's fairies here, had a lot to do with them not wanting to build around the tree, with not wanting to tear down the tree. He got enough people to be like, man, maybe there are fairies in that tree. And they were just like, fuck it, whatever. We don't need that one acre. I heard a little story. It was like a little quick story about this woman who, she was driving to the train station with a friend and she saw like, I guess in Scotland, they have these signs that point to kind of historical I mean, we kind of have them too, but <laughs> these official signs. <laughs> Historical landmark, they have these, five miles off. Yes, right? But they have they have their own specific signs. And she saw one that said, her and her friend saw one that said fairy ring, and it was pointing up into the woods. Well, that day they were late, so they couldn't stop. But a couple of months later, they came back to the same spot, but the sign was gone. But they decided to go up there anyway. And when they did, they said they found trees in a circle just uh, in the middle of nowhere just for no reason like that but they said when they looked down they saw old leather boots and then others were old leather boot soles the boots were gone like the (laughs) leather and stuff were gone it was just the soles and they said they were all over the place and the lady said she had a feeling of being watched so she left and when she talked to her another one of her friends they're like the if you would have gone the day you saw that sign, something would have happened because the fairies did that specifically for you. So, good thing she didn't go that day. Be like, can got you guys years bring me some Steve Maddens, please? <laughs> there's a there's another story about a fiddler who got stuck in the fairy realm. realm. He was coming back from I think some kind of contest or something. And he got, you know, he he somehow met these fairies and they convinced him to play for them so they could dance. So he obliged and started playing the fiddle. After one song, they gave him a drink and they convinced him to play another. And they started handing him gold. He's like, okay, this is perfect. So he played another. And then they convinced him to play another, giving him more gold and another drink. And... They kept doing this over and over and over until he ended up staying there the entire night. And when his pockets were full of gold and his, you know, he had his nice fill of drinks and they gave him food, he decided it was time to go home. So the fairies left and he went home. When he got home, there was a young man standing there and the fiddler was like, what's going on? He said, man, you've been gone for two years. I've now married your wife and this is now my house. And you know all that gold the fairies gave him? It turned out to be horse poop. <laughs> so he said, <laughs> yeah, pockets full of horse poop, no wife, and no home. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Pockets full of horse poop. That's <sighs> amazing. <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, that's why they say never go into the fairy realm. Because time will go past. You think you'll be there for hours, and it will be. Hey, Amanda, do you know of some ways to, like, prevent fairy attacks? I sure do. <laughs> <laughs> Just like I said with the changelings, how they would have iron scissors. Well, iron is one of the best ways to keep to keep fairies out of your house. A lot of time when pregnant women were going into labor, they would put iron nails in their bed or they would put iron tools under their bed. They would even just having, like an iron pin pinned to the to her clothes would be enough to ward away fairies. Do you know any ways to get rid of? I have some more, but do you have some? None. Okay. Other ways to get rid of fairies or keep fairies away are church bells, wearing your clothes inside out, which I don't get, but wearing your clothes inside out is something they do not like. Yeah, they're like, and look at also- that fucking dork. Right? <laughs> Don't want to be like that idiot. Uh, <laughs> um, Got his tag showing and all. Four-leaf clovers are another way to keep fairies away. But the probably the best and most 
done is food, offering them food. And their favorite food was bread. Any kind of bread, all kind of bread. They loved bread. Fuck, me too. Right? I get it. I get it, fairies. But the thing about it is you can't eat food fairies have eaten because fairies will take all the substance out of the food, but they'll leave the shell of the food. Like, they'll leave, you'll see food there, but it won't give you any, they won't provide you anything. So if you eat it, you'll eventually starve to death because it's nothing. And speaking of food with fairies, on the opposite, if you're ever offered any food from a fairy from the fey realm, do not consume it. Because once you consume food from the fairy realm, you are thus a slave to the fairy realm and can never leave. By far one of the most notable fairy incidents in our modern century would be that of the Cottingley Fairies, which is a 1920 series of photographs that were taken by Francis Griffith and Elise Wright, demonstrating them playing as children with fairies in a bog near their childhood home. This whole story is a little free. In 1917, the girls are playing out in this little area and they've been telling their parents that they've been seeing the little people or the fairy folk and that, that that's who they go out and play with. And one july in 1917 elise asks her father if they can borrow one of their cameras and he says of course and she goes ah we want to go take a picture of the little fairy people and they get one taken and it is a picture of francis with these fairy folk dancing in front of her and she's got a flower crown and there's one two three four i think five fairies and they're just dancing around her dressed in shades of green lavender and purple it's an interesting photo we'll we'll post all these photos for you guys to look at almost a month later they take another photo and this is of elise playing with a gnome who is dressed in a reddish jersey and a red cap and black tights and when they snap the picture of the gnome man apparently he jumps at francis and runs off now the girls have taken these pictures and shown them to their father and he's just like oh, okay well woo i'm glad you're having fun and just dismissed it as childish whatever well a whole bunch of people get a hold of these pictures and they're like oh my god it's fairies and fairy mania takes fucking the uk by storm wb yates even comes out and publishes this whole long book about fairies there's a couple of other people that release books on fairies arthur conan doyle the man who wrote sherlock holmes is actually Mm, so convinced by these pictures that he writes a book about these fairies called the coming of the fairies So with all this hype going on, the girls go out and take another picture and they cap, they take another two pictures. They capture Francis with a fairy jumping across her face and they capture Elise looking at a sprite who is handing her a flower. Both have the fairies very clearly. You can see them. And then a fifth picture appears in 1920, but nobody really can tell anything it looks like a fairy nest the images of these fairies are a little more translucent than they are in all the other pictures and they look like they're praying towards a cocoon almost basically these fairies took the world by storm and then everything kind of died out and there were people that were like well these look staged so they had them looked at and people came out and said there is absolutely no way these could have been staged there's movement in the picture there's this there's that and then people came back and said well look at the hairstyles these fairies look much like our 1920s paper models and people were like no of course they are putting together thought to what we would want people to look like as fairies well in 1980 the sisters finally came out and they were like no we we made that up those are paper dolls and we took pictures with them like we stuck hat pins in them and then stuck them in the ground and then took pictures with them on our brownie camera 
and they one by one worked through four of the five pictures and when they got to the last one with the translucent fairies praying towards the cocoon this is the one picture that girls still continue to say is the only real picture of fairies Mm -hmm. yes so we encourage you to go look at these pictures we will post them as said but i saw this youtube video mexican tv hosts had these skeletons of two supposed fairies and one was just like a little skeleton and another one was like a black skeleton with wings and they said that they did dna testing x-rays on it the dna testing said it was human dna and then the x-rays showed that they weren't puppets but i mean if you see it it's on youtube if you type in fairies you probably pop up eventually good luck uh but it's a really interesting me and my both me and my coworker had seen pictures and things on it on facebook and stuff and i don't know i'm not gonna say they're real or fake but they they looked pretty crazy and that guy had a fairy shoe too his little tiny shoe was crazy too so <laughs> little fairy there's, shoe there's yeah it was like a little leather shoe and it had it looked like it'd been worn but you know once again i'm not gonna say if it's fairy or not it's just out there people the fae are out there mm-hmm. and they say the the less you believe the more likely they're gonna get you that is fairies that is the fae oh. join us next week when we talk about the union missouri screaming house bringing you ghostly thrills for your next episode oh shit if you like what you hear please follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Encounters a Paranormal Experience. You can also find us on Tumblr at Encounters a Paranormal EXP, on YouTube at Encounters a Paranormal Experience, and on all major podcasting platforms. Don't forget, Amanda and I would not be here without you. We would like to thank you for all that you do, listener. Now, want to do one thing more? How about leaving a rating and review? It's quick, easy, and helps us more than you know. Until next week, I'm Dakota. I'm Amanda. Stay spooky. Ooh.